It is a statement on our behalf. We are very happy. Thank you. Thank you, Jeremiah. Uh, it is unfortunate that we are meeting here under these circumstances. When these new premises are invaded by usurpers of power, those who pretend to be representing the people. But we, as you can see, are here. The Honorable Martha Karua, Stephen Kalonzo Musioka, Eugene Vamalwa, and other members of Azimio. We've come to the headquarters of one of our sister parties to show solidarity with members of the Jubilee Party led by uh, the former president, Honorable Uhuru Megai Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. We have a statement that we want to communicate to the people of Kenya. And I'm going to go ahead and read this statement. <clears throat> we are here to make some quick but extremely important pronouncements on the state of the country, the ongoing actions by the Kenya Kwanzaa administration, and our plans as a Zimio La Umoja One Kenya coalition party. First, we want to ask the people of Kenya to wake up. Wake up to the fact that the country is in serious trouble, and there is no reason whatsoever for anyone to imagine that things will get better. Kenyans need to wake up to this sad state of affairs. Everything we ever fought for and won is threatened. Kenya Kwanzaa administration has launched an all-out assault on our hard-won multi-party democracy. There's an all-out push by the Kenya Kwanzaa regime to kill other parties buy and co-op members of parliament into its ranks and intimidate and bully all those that resist the administration's illegal, unconstitutional, and anti-democratic maneuvers. We have never seen this kind of spirited and swift assault on our democracy since the return of multi-party partism in 1992. To add insult to injury, the assault on our democracy is being financed by taxpayers' money at a time Kenyans need those monies for life and death matters like hunger and education. Kenyans must wake up to this reality. You have noted the continued deterioration of the living conditions of the people of Kenya. At no time in our recent history, have our people lived through so much hunger, desperation, frustration, and anger while the government focuses on politics of survival and revenge. Drought and famine are ravaging people and livestock across the country. Even our treasured wildlife are dying in their hundreds. The prices of goods are at an all-time high. People are crying for basics like water, food, and medicine. Pastoralists are asking for hay. They want their dying livestock to be purchased by the government so that they don't lose everything to drought. But Kenya Kwanzaa is neither listening nor getting it. More importantly, children are dropping out of school or failing to take up places in Form 1 because of school fees. We know no time in our recent history when there have been so many reports of qualified candidates appealing for help with the fees or failing to take up their places in Form 1. 
by the regime's own admission, up to 30% of pupils have failed to take up their places in Form 1. That is a monumental failure of the government. That is a monumental national shame. Yet the monies that went into subsidizing secondary education and the cost of basic commodities were withdrawn by the Kenya Kwanzaa regime and are being channeled at buying political support and killing democracy in the country. It has never happened to this country in recent years. The rule of law and constitutionalism are under serious threat. We have seen the military being deployed in the north without the authority of parliament as prescribed in our constitution. Our constitution is clear that nobody can deploy the military without the express authority of parliament. That deployment, taken together with the crackdown on real and imaginary enemies of the regime, including former officials of the Jubilee government, like Dr. Fred Matiangi, should be of concern to every Kenyan. We are courting disaster. We are feeding a monster from which, in due course, no one will be safe, not even those currently sharing it. We are witnessing an extremely dangerous trend where investigators and prosecutors have merged in our country. When investigators and prosecutors merge, Kenyans should be very afraid because there can never be justice under such circumstances. We are calling on out the Director of Public Prosecutions. Mr. Nudin Haji's conduct is unbecoming. He has become a huge threat to justice, the rule of law, <coughs> accountability, and good governance in the country. Haji must shape up or be shipped out. We have noted that despite our counsel, the Kenya Kwanzaa regime is hell bent on proceeding to unilaterally and single handedly reconstitute the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. This comes against the backdrop of the earlier illegal forcing out of four commissioners who disagreed with Mr. Fula Chebukati over the presidential election results. A bias and partisan IEBC is being put